All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how we can apply materials to objects inside of Fusion 360, and then we're going to talk about how we can use the rendering function in order to light this to create a more realistic rendering of our materials. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so let's say that we've created something simple like this. I've just created some like very fundamental shader balls on top of a flat plane right here. And so what I want to do is right now this is kind of boring and it all looks like it's made out of metal, but I don't necessarily want these to be metal objects. And so what I want to do is I want to apply materials to these. And so you can do that by going into the modify function right here. And note that there are two options for materials. So there are there are physical materials. So these are going to be materials that make an object look a certain way, but they're also going to contain engineering properties. So you can use this in order to do different simulations, other things like that. You also have the option down below to just change the appearance of an object. This has nothing to do with the physical materials themselves um, and more just changes the way that these look. So in general, in this tutorial, we're going to focus on the appearance rather than the physical materials because this isn't a simulation tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the option for appearance. And so when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a little window right here. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to take materials and apply it to either bodies and components or faces. Well, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply this to bodies or components. Though so you could do individual faces. So notice how as I mouse over this, I can see the different individual faces in here. If you wanted to do that, we don't necessarily want to do that for right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and note that there is a library of different materials contained inside of Fusion 360 already. Note that some of these are in the cloud. So notice how there's a checkbox right here to show downloadable materials. Um, so there are additional materials that you can download just by opening up these folders. But let's say that we wanted to create a wood base at the bottom here. Well, what I can do is I can scroll down and notice how I can see different woods in here. And so some of them have a little arrow next to them, which indicates that you would have to download them in order to use them. Or in this case, it looks like this might just be an updated version of this material. But what I can do is I can pick a material. So let's say I wanted this glossy walnut. I can click and drag it onto an object. And notice how when I click and drag it onto an object, the object is going to highlight. So when I do this, it's going to apply this material to this object. And so one of the things you might notice, and notice how this did this to multiple different objects because I had multiple things selected. So that what you have selected is going to be important. But in this situation, we'll just undo that, and just drag that on here for right now. And so notice what that did is that took this material and it actually applied it to this surface right here, meaning we now have this wood looking material. And the cool thing about this is this does look kind of rough. Um, it looks like it does have a map applied to it, um, which makes things look uh, kind of bumpy. So it's probably a normal map in this situation. But notice how now this wood material is going to show up on this list right here. It's going to show us that this material is contained in this design. Well, in this situation, say that I wanted to change the size of this material, I can actually right click on it. And there's an option here to edit the material that I've applied. And so notice how there are different things that you can adjust in here. So the scale is going to adjust the size of the material that's on the surface right here. So that one's pretty obvious. You've also got a rotation, which can change the direction that that material is going to go. The roughness is going to affect how reflective this material is. So if I bring the roughness value down to zero, this is going to reflect a lot. If I bring the roughness value up to one, this is not going to reflect as much. Now that's not really showing up in this tab right here. That's more going to show up when we jump over into the render tab in a minute. But just note that that is in here. Um, I'm going to leave that roughness at about 0.2 for right now. And then you've also got the reflectance in here, which is going to set, I believe, how much light is going to reflect off of the surface. I'm not 100% sure what the reflectance does. But note that there are also more advanced options in here. So if you right click and you click on advanced, notice what you can do is you can actually preview 
these materials and what your changes are going to do. So notice how I've got different environments and different lighting setups that I can use in order to preview this. And I can also set how realistic this rendered view is going to be. So obviously the production is going to be a lot different than the quick. So just be aware of that. If you want this to be a little bit bigger, you can click and drag this open or this wider right here. And remember that most of what you're seeing in here is really going to be affected when we go over into the render view for these reflections rather than this preview view that we're in right now. But note that there are some additional things in here, which we're not gonna worry too much about right now, but like emissivity is going to set um, if this object is going to emit light. The bump is going to be a map that's been loaded in that's going to set how bumpy this material is. And so if you do want to do some more advanced material editing, um, these slots are in here. For most general users of Fusion 360, I don't really think you're going to do a ton with this. But if you've done any rendering before, you know what a lot of this is. Um, and it is in here where you can bring in your own custom maps and load them in. And so let's take a look at some other materials, right? So we've apl applied a wood material right here. Let's say that we wanted to apply some different materials in here, like maybe a metal. So in this case, you can pick different metals. So say that we wanted um, one of these objects to be copper. Well, notice how when I scroll in here, there's options in here for a copper material. And I'm going to click the little button right here in order to update this. But I can drag a different material on a different body like this. So you can see how I was able to quickly apply copper to this one. Um, there's also other coatings in here. There's also glossy paints and flake paints and things like that. So let's say I wanted this to be a glossy blue, for example, I can apply that blue glossy material in here. All right, so you will rarely have to do this, but say you wanted to create your own custom material, which I would say probably like most users of Fusion 360 are probably not going to need to do, but some might, um, you can't right click in here and create your own material. That's not going to work um, for whatever reason. However, what you can do is you can right click on a material and you can duplicate it like this. And so in this case, I've duplicated my walnut material and say I wanted to add my own custom texture maps in here. I could go to edit advanced and I could rename this and load in my texture image files. So say for example, that I wanted to download something from like Polyhaven or something like that. Well, what you can do is you can select this. And so then you can go find a texture image. So for example, I've got this wood material. Well, what I want to do is I want to import that as the texture image. I'm going to click on done and I want to go ahead and I want to apply it to an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it onto this object. So you can see how that custom wood material now exists in here as a material. And so I can edit that and I could load in the different, different maps that came along with that. So like the roughness map, which is going to set the way that it reflects as well as the bump map. So I could just do that, do that by clicking, clicking and clicking on apply. Well, notice how now I have my own custom material in here like this. So you can create your own custom materials um, if you need to do that. All right. And then over here, let's apply um, a material. So this does support like glass materials and transparent materials. So if I click on glass, for example, and we're just going to pick one of these, it doesn't really matter which one, you can apply a transparent material to an object if you do need to have glass in here. So notice how that is going to show up a little different. It's going to show up with some transparency in here in your 3D viewport. But then if you ever wanted to like swap these out, you can just drag new materials on top of them in order to replace them. So it's actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo that. But that's a general idea of how you can apply materials to objects. Now let's jump over into the renderer and create a more realistic rendering with these objects. So to do that, we're going to click over into render. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this model before I do that. But now let's jump over and click on the tab for render. 
And so when we do that, what that's going to do is that's gonna pop you into this window that looks a little bit different. And so the reason that this looks a little bit different is now this is actually rendering your object out. Now it's doing it in a very high level preview sort of way, right? So like for example, you're not getting a lot of smooth reflections or anything like that, but notice how the way that the light is reflecting off of objects in here is different than it is back in your design view right here. And so what we want to do with this is we want to set this up so that it gives us a realistic rendering. And remember that what rendering is, is it's basically the applying of light to your objects in here um, in order to generate a more realistic result. And so there's different things you can click on in order to do this. So the appearance is just going to allow you to mess with your materials. So this is actually probably a better place to preview your materials because like if you look at this wood, for example, this wood looks a lot more realistic now than it did previously. So um, this viewport is going to give you a better idea of how that's going to look. So if you wanted to come in here and edit that and adjust like the scale of the material, for example, you could do that right here. Um, so you've also got an option here for your scene settings. And your scene settings is gonna allow you to set things like if your rendering is gonna have a ground plane or not. Notice how if you toggle that ground plane on, you're gonna get shadows. Um, if you don't, then you're gonna get that toggled off. Um, you've also got the option for reflections on your ground plane. So if you wanna make your ground plane reflective, you can do that right here. But you can also set things like the environment. And the environment is going to set the lighting that's contained inside of your view, right? So right now what this has is this has basically a lighting environment applied to it that is um, simulating lighting in real life. And so notice how what I can do is I can click and drag other lighting environments on here. Well, notice what that's doing is that's changing the lighting in here and it's adjusting the way that things look because the lights are different. So notice how you can see the reflection off of this right here. And so you can use this to create lighting environments. And note that there is an option in here to attach custom HDRI files. Um, those are going to be lighting files that you can download that contain lighting information, but you can click on this little folder right here. But say you wanted to import your own custom HDR file from like a HDR Haven or somewhere like that, you can double click in order to bring that in and it's going to get applied as your lighting setting for your scene. And so let's go ahead, before we get any deeper into this, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back <clears throat> to the Fusion 360 library and just apply one of these. But let's go ahead and let's create a rendering. And so there's really two options in here for ways you can do that. So you can do this as an in canvas render. So if I click on this, what this is going to do is this is going to actually render this out directly in the canvas right here like this. And notice what that's doing is that's applying the light to this scene. And these actually look really good. Notice how the glass, for example, is kind of bending the light around um, inside of this object. So this is actually simulating what light is going to do. And notice how if I move around, so say I was to orbit like this, notice how that rendering is going to adjust and change and update based on that new location right here. And so you can use this to do a quick in canvas render. And then when you're done, if you want to save this, you can click on the option for capture image. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to save that image right here. And it's going to let you either save this to the cloud or you can save it to your computer. And note that there are some settings in here that allow you to adjust how fast this render is. Because one thing you might notice is you might notice that your computer really kind of heats up um, on this one because it's actually going through and it's doing these lighting calculations. So you can do things like limiting the resolution which is going to make the rendering a lot faster, um, depending on what you're trying to do. This, you can use the in canvas render in here as kind of a preview before you do a longer final render. Okay, and so let's say that we wanted to create a final render. What we can do is we can click on the render button right here and that's gonna pop up this little window. And so note that there are a couple different options in here. So first off, you have some different resolution settings. So you can either set this to have kind of these uh, preset settings right here, 
or you can also click on the option for custom in order to set a custom aspect ratio, um, adjust some things about uh, adjust some things about the file type that's created, other things like that. But then there are also two options in here, one for cloud rendering, which means that this will render in the cloud and it'll use Fusion 360 or Autodesk servers in order to render this out. That's something you may wanna consider um, if you have a slower computer or You've also got the option here to do this using your local computer, and you can either render this with a standard quality, or you can render it with a final quality, which is going to require Fusion 360 tokens. And so in this case, we'll just go ahead and we'll go with standard, and we'll click on the option for render right here. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna render this locally on your computer, and note that when it does this, it's going to create a render right here, which you can see and access. Um, you can also click on the button to download it in order to download that rendering file. So in this case, I could call this render one and save this on my computer. Now note that you can create multiple different renders. So say that I wanted a different one um, at a different angle like this. What we can do is we can click on that render button again. We're gonna render this one locally, but notice what this is gonna do is this is going to save this to our rendering gallery right here. All right, and then one final note is down in the rendering gallery, note that you've got your different thumbnails in here, which is going to be the render images that you've created, but say that you want these to update when you change something, notice how there's an option over here for render on save. And so if I drag this thumbnail and this thumbnail over into render on save. Now, if I come in here and I make a change, so let's say that I was to um, change this object right here to a different color. So we'll go with a green glossy paint, maybe. But I'm gonna drag this on here, then I'm gonna save it right here. But notice how now, and this took a little while for this to do, but this is going back through and it's re-rendering these in the background. So. Notice how this shows version four in the corner and notice how I have version four of my object right here. So what this did is this went in here and this rendered this image with the change that we made with this new material like this. And so notice that if you click on the little number right here, this is gonna show you both the older view and the newer view in here. So this is actually going to save your rendered images in here with the old version and the new version right here. And so you can actually keep lists of your renderings with different versions down here in your rendering gallery. All right, so this should give you a general idea of how to render in Fusion 360. If there's something you wanna get into in more depth, we can definitely do that. I wanted to give you kind of a high level overview. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. We can get into this topic in more depth in the future. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.